we are joined by Mr. Ghulam Zia, Executive Director, Advisory Retail and Hospitality at Knight Frank. He's joining us uh, from our Mumbai studios. Mr. Zia, thank you so much for speaking with us at NDTV Profit. Now, the real estate stocks had reacted very negatively to the news development today earlier. Um, uh, how much of an impact will there be on sales, especially in the residential segment? Uh, because, uh, you know, the belief is that uh, black money plays a very important role. Uh, it's a large percentage of residential sales, especially in the secondary market. Uh, what's your view? Look, first of all, uh, it, there is a huge panic, first of all, because of whatever is happening, there is a huge amount of confusion in the market and that confusion will obviously take some time to settle down. I agree that uh, pulling out of this entire cash from, real, from the market will hit uh, real estate the most adversely because uh, very conservative estimates actually tell us that about one third of the overall real estate economy in the country runs on parallel uh, money system. And obviously that means a huge impact on overall housing, etc., where housing is about 80% and more of the overall real estate. So here the impact will be felt on those who are uh, into housing markets and housing trades, whether primary or secondary, you know, uh, the impact is not going to be restricted to just one section or one locality or one geography alone. Obviously there will be a dominoes impact, uh, dominoes effect because once it starts at one place, Everything will not be, uh, no, no, nobody can say that I am safe and I am isolated. Practically every sector will feel the heat. No, every sector will feel the heat, but we want to understand uh, what is the impact on real estate, especially on sales. Sales in any case in the residential segment in large uh, tier one cities like N uh, Delhi, NCR, Mumbai have been impacted uh, because of the slowdown. And now that, uh, you know, um, uh, with this uh, crackdown on black money, do you have any estimates on what will be the impact of sales, especially in the secondary market? Well, uh, uh, we were just about rejoicing, say, uh, 24 hours or 48 hours back with a great Diwali season, uh, perhaps the best Diwali season after five years and so on. But then came this uh, huge blow. So obviously what we are talking about is uh, a huge impact on housing market for sure, whether it is primary or secondary. First of all, the buyers, the consumers would obviously be concerned as to exactly how do they manage their finances. Because all this while there was, the black money was playing a, a certain role in this entire transaction of uh, housing stocks. So uh, our estimates, while it's, it's very, uh, op, you know, uh, it, it's not going to be appropriate to just give a certain number to it. But then at least next quarter or two, we will see a severe impact on the housing sales, especially uh, 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 definitely for secondary, but primary will also not be immune to it. Any estimates as, that you can give us? Uh, it could be a range and how much sales would be affected? It's tough to say. While on one side we're talking about the prices, you know, coming down in different areas by different uh, ranges, the, you know, uh, at least about 15 to 20 percent will be the impact on sales as well. Okay, so sales are down 15 to 20 percent, but uh, prices, how much could they correct? And you said, you know, the buyers have to figure out how they will do their purchases. What about the sellers? Isn't it the sellers who also demand certain portion of the entire transaction uh, be made in cash? Well, obviously, that is uh, at least the way it seems right now. That's a thing of a past. Nobody can actually today demand of cash because you don't know how will you put that cash into your accounts or how will you actually consume it with this entire demonetization thing happening. So I'm sure more than a seller, the buyer will be keen to get rid of his cash money or whatever money he has accumulated. So at least uh, uh, in the short term, because of just lack of clarity, how do we move on? How do we treat with the, the cash or whatever monies that we have? Because of that, at least in the interim, there will be a lull. There will be at least a quarter of a lull because people will, first, will have to figure out how do they manage their uh, finances in the interim to buy a house. And in any case, housing has been a discretionary uh, uh, item on our uh, expenses, on our finances. So uh, it's something which will take a back seat. You'll have to look at the non-discretionary items to actually uh, uh, you know, take the major portion of your consumption. And then perhaps at least a quarter or two later, will you decide to whether to buy that house or not? Right. Uh, Mr. Gulam, what will be your view on, uh, you know, the investment demand? A lot of the demand was also coming into rural areas, into smaller towns, into new buildings because people wanted to invest. They were safe that prices may not go down. Suddenly that demand would just go away now? 
Yeah, for sure. You know, as far as investment case is concerned, you know, uh, it's very evident that today with where we are, prices are bound to go down. There will be a dip in real estate prices. So uh, I'm sure nobody would want to take an exposure for an investment today, you know, because we are expecting a price that the prices to come down in every market. It's only the end user who has to buy a house for compulsion for whatever reason. These are the guys who will continue to buy even in these markets. But as far as investors are concerned, it's going to be a strict no-no for at least next quarter or two. Right. And you know, what do you do with the already existing inventory? Uh, suddenly there'll be no buyers for it and all would want to sell out. But at the same time, you know, you, you, may, you may just not see them, see any major demand for it. So again, that investment would get backdated or, you know, it may not be incashable soon. Yeah, for sure. Look, as I said, a quarter of a quarter or two of lull is going to be a reality. But in the interim, in any case, uh, you know, the stocks have been curtailed. The, the new supplies in practically every market has come down severely in last three, four quarters. So in any case, we don't really have a huge pileup of uh, inventory, which will be very difficult to uh, absorb. But in any case, at least two quarters will be gone from uh, the records of every company. So that burden of those two quarters will be felt, say, after uh, 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 the, in the new financial year, we will see a huge inventory pileup. If at all, the construction pace also moves on. I, I seriously suspect, I'm sure the first thing the developers do is slow down their construction activity and that has an impact on your uh, inventory levels as well. Inventory is always manageable. So I don't really see that after uh, two or three quarters, you will have a sudden huge inventory piling up for people to actually worry about, developers to worry about prices to come down suddenly. Right. As far as, you know, the point that you made, existing buildings which are getting made, which are in the process of being made, say if not a lot of work has been done, you expect a slowdown over there. Not that the builder may not want to go ahead and construct it, but you know, sudden liquidity problems uh, may not be able to p pay the suppliers the way they were paying the suppliers or their uh, you know other stakeholders. They would not be able to do that right now because liquidity has suddenly gone away. Uh, so that that will have a big impact. Will definitely have an impact, no? Because uh, construction also has. Uh, you know, some amount of cash transaction happening, whether it is for uh, small time contractors or for a lot of uh, material purchases, especially for finishings, etc. We do have exchange of cash happening at this stage. That's on one side, which is about more of liquidity. But on the other side, because of a slowing down of, uh, uh, of demand, so slowing down of consumption, and with lesser money available to the developer, I'm sure there will be, a, a, you know, slowdown on construction progress as well. However, on the other side, with RERA breathing down their necks, even they are worried that if they don't really wrap up whatever they have at hand, they will actually be caught up in that RERA issue as well. So it's actually a cash 22 situation for all the developers, whether they should complete it or wait for the RERA to come in the picture. Right. Uh, you know, just as far as the entire chain is concerned, so it's, it's not that, uh, you know, uh, only big builders do it, only small builders do it. It's a chain. And, you know, we have a lot of subcontractors, small players, small workers. Uh, what happens to the employment? Do you believe that will take a hit or you know people will just wait for three, six months, take that loss and then go ahead? Look, in any case, uh, what we have observed last at least year and a half or two with so much of slowdown in real estate, construction pro uh, progress itself was actually uh, had a if not halted, was extremely slow. And which obviously had a huge impact on the employment that real estate generates, especially in the unskilled and skilled, the, the semi-skilled uh, category of laborers. We had a huge problem. The employment was not as good as what it used to be, say, about three or, three or four years back. So in any case, that side, the employment had shrunk to a large extent. Going forward with further impact on the progress of work, I'm sure it will have a further negative impact on the employment. Right. Uh, sir, thank you so much for taking out time for us. As more developments happen in this sector, I uh, hope to see you and chat uh, with your views on that.